noble enterprise. Memoirs of the Centenary Greenhouse by MOBA 1981. It's a collection of events and stories of advancement from 1976 to 1983. It covered a period of seven odd years. Inspiration matters. As noted by editors, Mr. Moses Aiku Jr. and David Cornelius, the venture started off as a puzzle, but without the pieces to complete the project. As the team recalled, and I'm quoting this, we started out by forming an editorial committee to assist with the book writing process. Then we set up several WhatsApp platforms to collect stories, pictures, and audio contributions. The platform also allowed us to freely contribute our thoughts and opinions on the stories. Quotation closed. Persistence. At one point, the editorial team lost the willpower and considered shutting down the project altogether and admitting that they had failed. But suddenly, like the flash from a lightning rod, something amazing happened. Someone, bless his heart, wrote a very engaging story recollecting a memorable event of that period. That recollection was so moving that it prompted many more to start exploring the memory lanes and share similar relatable stories. As a result, fresh stories started to pour in, providing materials that finally made this magnificent 497-page book possible. Who was this person who started that thing? Anyway, may he be praised. <laughs> because as a matter of fact, he's the one from reading the book, he's the one who made it possible. Now, this book consists of 16 illuminating chapters with many black and white and color pictures. The various chapters include Infant Spring Centenary Celebration, Infant Spring Scholars and Nation Builders, Sports at Infant Spring, Student Agitation, School Management through the Headmaster Board of Governors, Teachers, the PTA, the June 4th Uprising in 1979, how it transpired at Infant Spring, Entertainment and Social Life on the Hill, the Dormitory Life, Story from Bama Aqua to Battle Smith. The future, and this is the last one, the last chapter, the future of Infant Spim, the challenges and the possibilities. We can't go there because first of all, you have to buy the book first. So I begin to know these details. And I'm a boy. And I am. Good. Now, there are nine appendices, which include the 145th speech by James E.K. Datsun Hoa. Let's give the young man a hand. I can call you a young man. I don't care how bold you are. I can call you a young man. Good. And then it also includes the 137 speech by Moses K. Baden. Sorry, here. Very good. They are the movers and shakers who made this impossible. Good. And then we also have the iconic entrepreneur. Now blessed to serve as the new Abusi Penny. Let's give my hand again. We have great expectations of you. Don't let us down. Very good. And then we want to also thank the indomitable Captain Retired for Future. Let's give the young man a hand. Listen, I'm qualified to call all of you young men, whether you like it or not. Now, the effort, persistence, and grit of the Mobile 1981 editorial team is a reminder that far too often we tend to see the great things after they had happened, but we choose not to see the vision that releases boundless potential into accomplishments. Determination is tough to sustain, and so not too many groups choose to persevere, or you human. To hold on to the finish line, a lot of people give up, and I'm glad you didn't give up. Let's give my hand again. You are a blessing to our school. Good. For that reason alone, the 1976 Centenary Greenhorn deserved to be applauded over and over and over again. Let's shower them with those blessings. As I noted in the previous writing, 
Every school has a pride of place in the history of its unique beginnings. But that pride, first and foremost, must radiate from the very core of the school's beneficiaries. That is you, the past students. And why makes the golden opportunity to demonstrate that gratitude in refined ways as exemplified by the centenary grievance of Kwabutri. The inspiration that drove this wonderful project reminded me of Francine's very humble beginnings. And I wrote about that in my book. In 1876, for the young people here, the school was founded, it seemed, from a collection plate in a mission house. The accidental founding headmaster, a 19-year-old teenager, James Pico, was enticed for the job by his elder brother of the Wesleyan Mission. The adolescent began as the only teacher, and after a few years, 1876 to 1878, he left the Gold Coast to go and finish his own education back in Britain. He did not return for the job. Now, the reputation of a world-renowned secondary school tends to overshadow the fact that, time after time, the school itself was virtually broke and homeless. I don't know if you know that. But as the editors noted, it persevered to produce the likes of Kofi Buzia, Joe Appiah, Alpi Bafo, Alex Kuisinsaki, the first African to preside over the United Nations General Assembly and Kofi Annan, the first sub-Saharan African Secretary General at the United Nations, and many more people. The head boy of 1977-1970, Kukwa, what you see here? Good. In his forward, noted the excellence of the teachers who built this great school, and taught as much of what we know today, and the achievement of those who are proud to call our mates. They come in the form of artists, scientists, Lawyers, professors, clergymen, entrepreneurs, captains of industry, United States Secretary General, to say a few. And wherever you find people of importance, there's someone from France in that mix. Now, in noticing the large array of professionally qualified people in the centenary group, I was reminded of a bit of history shared by Professor Idu Now, we're going back to 1925. Irene Lockhart, in 1925, was to encounter the famed founders of Achimoto School, Governor Gordon Godgesberg, uh, Reverend Alec Fraser, and Dr. Kujir Agri. The trio, those three, plus the governor's deputy, one Dr. J. Crawford Maxwell, had visited Cape Coast earlier to observe in France Spain. But before embarking on their great project called the Achimoto School, they have suggested to Reverend Lockhart to consider reducing enfranchisement into an elementary school <laughs> to receive funding from the imperial government. Well, hey, if you don't reduce yourself to Saito School, you're Mosca. <laughs> now, Reverend Lockhart was an Irishman. Sometimes we used to think that all white folks are the same. They are not. Reverend Locker was an Irishman, and there was a nerve that was provoked by the imperial arrogance. So he was too shrewd to be taken advantage of by the British imperial government. Knowing how far in France has come from 1876 to 1925, a period of about 50 years, Locker saw no sense in that ridiculous idea. And he said no. Never on my watch. What we say to this now, who born dog? <laughs> he didn't say then. You know, he could detect an open conspiracy to diminish the mission, the sweat and tears of the founders since 1876. Thereafter, Lockhart was, de was to declare that one day the Gold Coast will marvel at the products that will come out of France. And guess what? Looking at you, history has proven him right. Yes, yes, yes. In reviewing this book, I couldn't help but stop to reflect on a chapter, noting some prominent achievers as Reverend Lockhart had prophesied, such as Kukwawatri, Kwekubedu Ado, K. 
Kate and Miss Arthur, Quincy Trim, Ashen Morton, now Nana Prempe, Philip Bonzi Simpson, Philip Addison, Joe Gatti, Hans Jabba, Bruce Thompson, and as Capra as Samoa, our own James Kojo Morgan, KB Coleman, Quincy Bentidential, KB Quincy Saki, E.O. Melslamte, Kwamina Beecham, Fifi Brantford, how are you fam? I own Fifi, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Alex Queno, how are you fam? <laughs> Quincy Prempe Ek, Anthony Fawcett Jr., A. Sankuma, Daniel Obama Tete, Norton Omabu, and the numerous others. Can you imagine if Lockett has succumbed to the wishes of the, those people who wanted to start another school? You know, I was speaking with the Battels that how he get away with it. Because they had the power to close the school down or to convert into something else. And he said, the first principal, Fraser, was so patient. He said, look, Achimota is going to need competition. And there's only one school that can give them that competition. And that school is in France. So please leave in France alone. And that's how we survived. Good. Now, succession. A few months back, when David Cornelius visited my Macarthur Yale office Accra to announce the makings of this book and to include a piece I had published earlier in my column about the late headmaster, B.K. Dontry. I had no idea that a project would add such a steady stream of history to our beloved school. In my opinion, the editors have produced historic sketches based only after a Du Bois seminal work in France in the making of Ghana. Congratulations. In our time, from the 1960s, and even before that, the scale of values was measured by the commitment of men who believed in educating the youth in the best interest of the nation, as was shown by iconic exemplars like Francis L. Patels, Reverend W. B. Blanford, your father, Joseph Abugwa, Okimoni, and others. And way before that, in France, we could brag about the commitments shown by John Mensa Saba, J.E. Kisnehefort, and the Faithful Eight. It was refreshing to know, in the era of the centenary grievance, administrators and teachers like Akwebadu, K.P. Dontry, my own form mates, and our classmates, C.K. Isham, Dora Disu, you remember these people, right? T.S. Texan, Cosmos Okran. I got all this information from C.K. because I was going to check to see if you guys are mentioning the right people or if you've met somebody. And he gave me these things because he was there. When you were there, me what? Good. Miss K. A. Dovlo. I've done my research, too. Me a small boy, my own research, don't you know? And others availed themselves to continue that tradition. Now, in conclusion, the task before us today. Good. As T.P. Brantford, the centenary head boy 1976 and 77 noted in his story, this book is the first of its kind. For other mobile year groups, and I wish they were here, mobile 1981 has shown the way to go and demonstrated through their persistence and enthusiasm how to continue this profound tradition every five years. As an example, my own book, which was supported by Mobile since 1966, in France, the makers of a good school, was really timing the period of 1961 through 1966, where I mentioned our own experiences and also the headmasters and the teachers who were, who were lucky to have educated us. As noted earlier, every school has pride of place in this beautiful country of ours. And it's worth illuminating their successes 
from the hilltops. We need to know who we are. We need to know who brought us up. And we need to be the guiding light for those who are there today, 2023. Now, this book, Memoirs of the Centenary Greenhouse, will be of great use in motivating other schools to also consider and take an inventory and appreciate their past and present successful circumstances. Again, congratulations to Mobile Class of 1981. I think they deserve a standing ovation. Shall we please rise and give them a standing ovation? And God bless you.